the actual application used uh, a, a 50 gigabyte virtual drive with maybe eight or nine gigs of actual data on it as the golden image. And the differentials chewed up no more than 800 megs of data, which is also <laughs> an interesting angle. I mean, you know, drives are cheap, but 50, <laughs> 50 gig drives still, <laughs> it's still something. <laughs> so saved a good deal of room in the process. Um, the, um, Drives were configured as two pools. Pool to pool is a data core concept. It's a group of disk drives that are uh, uh, um, have a rotating block allocation associated with them. Um, there was a pool that um, took the local reads and writes on the machine running the VDIs, and then there was a pool that was a mirror of the of a similar pool on the other node that uh, um, became a secondary and was, became the base of high availability uh, 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 storage for the system if the uh, first node had gone down or the storage of the first node had gone down. And it was also the basis for migrating the application to a new node if, if a failure in the basic hardware should occur. So it was a very straightforward configuration. VSI benchmark, nothing strange. We flipped all the switches they told us to and did nothing else. So it should, almost anybody should be able to get the same results right out of the can. Um, the um, entire effort was to keep it simple, simple, simple. Our guess was here that if we were able to get um, the cost per virtual machine down past below a certain threshold and for us arbitrarily it was a hundred bucks. Hardware, software, fully burdened, storage, and the whole nine yards. Um, then the next objective was not to get it from a hundred to fifty or from fifty to twenty-five. Next objective was to make it simple, simple, simple. Standard hardware, standard software, standard configuration, standard usage of standard components and make it comparable. And I think we achieved those things pretty well actually. There's nothing, this is the first time we're bragging about doing nothing funny. <laughs> nothing brilliant here. <laughs>Typical way that companies like Datacore do network virtualization is they do flat networks. And there's a reason for that. I mean, there's many opportunities to slice and dice the network into regions and so on and so forth. But we do flat networks because they're usually generic, they're open-ended, they have changing requirements of all types. Um, but for specific kinds of opportunities, there is an opportunity to do uh, a, a specific type of topological expansion or scale, scaling, uh, um, and um, we use a star. Why do we use a star? Because stars have always been used for that purpose. It's a very nice way to configure a system. Basically, a star for us is simple. Um, instead of having a number of nodes that are uh, server nodes that are hosts for data core software and are thus become uh, virtual storage controllers, um, we have one. And then we host the, uh, uh, its pairs, overloaded pairs, because they all pair with the central node of the star hub node, um, on the application servers that are running the various virtual machines or whatever. The great advantage of this is that one can configure a system without regard to the topology as a whole and fit it in and out of that system with very low uh, disruption of the entire environment. Um, VDI is perfect for this. And it turns out cloud is perfect for this too because cloud is the first first environment that throws a, a thousand machines at me that do exactly the same thing. So <laughs> this is the pre-configuration possibility. And I think we can stretch it a lot farther, but the star takes the first step in that direction. If we have a star node that is doing essentially nothing other than mirroring to the central node, 
then the star node is essentially standalone. It, can, it, it doesn't have to be homogeneous, it doesn't have to be uh, of a similar type to the other stars. All it has to do is to have the capacity to mirror itself to the center. And that center has to be, be able to accommodate mirrors from many such star nodes. Um, which is easy to do because the mirroring uh, uh, load on these machines is very low. Adding and subtracting nodes to the star becomes transparent. Each time you add a node, you add the storage capability to support it. You add any supporting software that may be necessary for it, if you've got license management or whatever. And the center of the star becomes a central point of control. The next step in that is to turn the star into a virtual star or a hive. Make it so that the underlying, this, this flexibility that we get from a known topology and a known workload is abstracted one level higher <laughs> in the hierarchy. Now we have a machine of machines that acts as a single unit. And if we're smart, we look backwards in history and see the work that's already been done, some of which was brilliant, and we start to talk about things like a hive that talks to the world through a port. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it requires nothing on the other side of that port except storage of sufficient capacity and storage of sufficient uh, 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 performance. Same applies for things other than storage, right? <laughs> right? Network capacity, whatever it may be. This is a very interesting way to grow this system. Anyway, long and the short of it. We have two nodes. If you want to go to three, instead of making the third node into a triangle, we make it the hub of a star. Run your VDIs on that as well if you like, or don't, because it will amortize itself out quickly. Fourth node gets added the same way. Fifth node gets added the same way. Do it on the back of an envelope. Grow is pretty big before you have to think about what if I replicate the center node to have more capacity. Grows pretty darn big. How big? Thousands of virtual desktops easily. We're going to benchmark this and not too far into the future. Within the next couple months, we'll benchmark uh, 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 configuration. But the objective here will not be to further reduce the cost of virtual desktops. We're hoping to scale linearly what we've got already now. The objective here will be to add nodes without thinking about it. <laughs> add a node and you got the same performance, same cost over X number more platforms. Add five nodes, you've got the same cost, the same. So what we've done is we've taken one thing out of the equation. We're now talking about a known quantity. Well, in computer science, there's nothing better than no. <laughs> We can't do better than that. I wish we could cure the common cold. We can't. But if we can reduce things to known quantities, we make life practical.